The year is 1996. Nintendo had just launched a Nintendo 64 in early fall. But that doesn't stop Rareware from developing one last game on the 16-bit console, nor does it stop Nintendo from releasing that game in mid-November, while most people were already playing the first 3D Mario game. This is Donkey Kong Country 3 Dixie Kong's Double Trouble for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. In this final game of the 90s Donkey Kong Country series, Donkey and Diddy have both mysteriously disappeared in a region far from their home island. So now Dixie Kong must embark on a quest to save them, as she's joined by her younger cousin Kitty Kong, who hasn't been around much since one more Donkey Kong game on the original Game Boy. It's again a simple story with a simple premise that makes an excuse for you to monkey around another 2D platform game. The visual presentation seems better in some areas, but worse in others. You do get a closer view of your monkeys, and things do look more detailed, but it also looks bland in its art compared to the second game. This is something I can say about the sound as well. The music still gives the game a sense of rhythm, and the sound design with monkey sounds and hit sounds is about the same as before, but gone is the victory musical jam at the end of a level, instead doing more of a bland version of Mario's flagpole jump and slide. I mean, the music is good, but that sense of style that made the first two games fun seems to be lacking here. Wait, is that the Mario 64 theme? Okay, well, there's at least some charm to be found here. Cover across promotional easter egg added by Rare. Now ignoring that I'm not a big fan of the lackluster presentation, or of Kitty Kong himself, this game is mostly a victim of its timing. By the time this game was released, Nintendo fans everywhere were already captivated by Mario 64, so suddenly 2D platformers were falling out of favor. But the game still gathered fan appreciation, and understandably so. I said it still feels rhythmic, and that's true, but there's way less focus on that now. DKC3 puts more focus on exploring the 2D plane to find every banana, coin, and other bonus collectible. Or sometimes that involves backtracking to hit a switch that needs to open up a door much later in the level. Like this level where I didn't realize that I needed to hit all the rats in the wheels in order to advance to the end. Thankfully the bonuses are worth finding, as most of them are more fun than the main game this time around. I maybe enjoyed beating Cranky at this game more than the developers intended. Take that, you abusive geezer! There is some creativity in the levels as you'd expect, including some out there enemies and larger bosses and new animal transformations. Some like the spider have returned, but I noticed there seem to be a lot of elephant transformations. He may look like a rare version of Dumbo, but trust me, he's actually really useful in dispatching enemies. Even with all this though, the game gets repetitive with certain level designs. I swear I've played through the same hollowed out tree level twice already. I just wish they took some more creative notes from Diddy's Conquest. I mean, mechanics wise, this is the kind of Donkey Kong Country game we know and love, but a lot of the design choices leave much to be desired. While this game isn't exactly the best in the trilogy, it's not terrible either. It's still a good 2D platformer in the Donkey Kong series that you can play for free through Nintendo Switch Online. Well, that's my review of Donkey Kong Country 3 Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. If you liked this review, check out my previous reviews of the first two Donkey Kong Country games on the SNES. See you all next time!